Would you please come lie stop drinking and as usual the several things in the simplest thing we say and do some of it looks like complete improvisation but there are some people who have been listening to me for 23 years and they are surprised to find the same thing put under a new source <laughs> now and that is a way not in order to do just the bravura or the bravado of doing that. It is that unless the thing is new and unknown, you can actually more or less mobilize yourself in order to learn what you can do. But if I did the things you can do, you would find yourself impossible to do it out of it. That's why I believe that exercises are of no use at all to anybody. And that's why many people come and give me an exercise for my hands. I say, if I give you a hand exercise for your hand or for your voice, I give you a problem for life. <laughs> because, listen to the problem for life. Suppose, suppose that I feel now my breathing is not good, and I've smoked too much, and I'm blah, 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 talking a lot. Then I say, oh, my breathing is getting bad. I have a little bit of asthma. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, then I go, and you give me an exercise. You'll do that, you'll do that. One, two, and then you find that your breathing out is not good enough because you're asthmatic. Because asthmatics actually can do that. <laughs> Breathing out, they can't breathe out. Now, I give you an exercise to breathe out and say, they say breathe in, one, two, three, four, and then breathe out, one, two, uh, breathe out, breathe out. You breathe in, you breathe out. Now you will find that you feel a little better after doing half an hour of doing that, you will feel better. But then next morning, you know that your breathing is not good and you have had an exercise that did it. So next morning you say, ah, my breathing is no good, I'm doing the exercise that yet yesterday made me feel better. I do the same thing again, I feel again better. But then you exercise the thought and the feeling that you don't breathe well more than the exercise. So each time you do the exercise, you have for your life, Will you do every morning the exercise to feel better? And a lifetime you feel a little bit better after the exercise and you will die of asthma. <laughs> not because asthma is killing. Asthma is not a killing disease. But asthma, <gasps> won't you do the <gasps> Ah, my spasm is good, I feel all right. Now, if you have that damn thing and you do that to relieve your spasm, you may be sure you'll be relieving your spasm to the end of your life. Therefore, people who ask me, give me an exercise for that damn thing or for that damn thing, they don't know what they ask me. They ask me to do them the disservice so that I can make their little problem into a problem for life. Now, there's another way, a better way of, of getting your asthma better than doing that. You will learn to do that. You will learn to do that yourself. Now, another thing I want to show you this, that I am not stingy in time, that if I tell you next time we have a minute, five minutes rest or ten minutes, it's not because I don't want to work with you another half an hour. In fact, now you would all like to go, and I am tired, and I would like to go. Yet, I find it essential for you to do something else, and therefore I will do it. But then know that next time when you are asked to give up five minutes for me, you should be as generous as I, to you, all right? So would you please not look at the watches anymore and not look, ah, uh, we have five minutes less, because I can give you in principle half an hour now and then deduct every day 10 minutes from you. To be just uh, honest, no? All right. Now uh, that being so, I'll tell you only one thing while you're all attentive. We will start tomorrow at 10 o'clock. All right? 10 o'clock tomorrow. And we will have 
I have a principle that you should not observe principles. <laughs> now, can you see how clear our speaking is? We call it a paradox. But damn it, how do we make a paradox? By speaking? So a principle that I have no principles, or that all principles are no good. You've learned that the sophist in, in, in Greek, in Greece already knew that trick of the mind, to make all the people in that place are liars. Therefore, if I'm telling you that they are liars, and I'm from that place, I'm also a liar. Therefore, it's, it's not true that they are liars. Isn't it? But I told you that they are liars, so they must be liars. Now, what is right? Are they liars? Is he a liar? Is anybody a liar? Is the principle a good thing or a bad thing? The thing is, principles are good and bad. If you do them in a compulsive way, if you stick to a principle, could, could, it means at any price, there is only one principle that may be stuck like that, that is the dignity of the human person, not killing human people for nothing. That may be correct to do, though I know times where it is absolutely just and correct to break that principle and kill the person, because if you kill one person like that, you would have saved about 80 million people that were killed during the, the, this Hitler business. 80 million people were killed. Now, if Hindenburg had the sense of killing Hitler, maybe the whole thing would be averted, maybe not. Maybe not, but you can see there are times when we have to think very clearly whether killing is not the best thing you can do for humanity. Of course, and maybe for Hitler himself, because he died like a dog. He died with complete failure that he had to commit suicide himself. Now, so if somebody killed him before, he would have saved 80 million people in the misery of the world for five, six years. Huh? Was it right to kill him or not? Which principle do you observe? Can you see how principles, if they are compulsive, they are idiotic. And I have a principle of not having principles. That means I do work one hour, but in fact I work two hours almost without a break.